Hello, everybody. My name is Aldo. Uh, I'm from Google. But in this talk, I'm representing uh, thick apps from, from Kubernetes community. Uh, so basically, uh, what I want to, to, to say is that, well, we understand that um, we, underst we understood uh, from, see, that since the start of Kubernetes, the job API was not meant or was not ready to run all kinds of applications. Um, so um, all, kind of, all kinds of applications uh, in the HPC AI ML, ML, ML uh, space. So uh, I'm sorry, I need to, I cannot really see what I'm doing here. Um, Good. Sorry about that. Um, so, uh, in particular, when you wanted to uh, run parallel applications on Kubernetes, you run into a number of problems. Uh, in, as you might know, in the Kubernetes API, in the Kubernetes documentation, we uh, proposed a set of um, patterns for how to run a job, parallel jobs, and they were actually cumbersome. For example, you you had to set up a, an external queue just to do. Uh, data partitioning. Or another recommendation was if you wanted to run the same job across a, a set of uh, different sets of, of data, you had to just set up your own uh, orchestrator around the job controller. And of course, uh, there is limited control over, over startup or termination uh, of the pods, how to control retries or rather fail a job, etc. And this, caused, uh, this has caused that uh, a number of uh, developers in the ecosystem, um, you've probably, you already heard of some of them during this talk, during this uh, batch HPC day, that uh, there were a number of people, uh, projects, rewriting uh, the job controller. And this, uh, of course, leads to fragmentation, which makes it hard for uh, providers to support. No, uh, we were hearing earlier that, well, the, now we have all of these uh, different APIs we have to support, which ones my provider supports. So that's uh, one problem. And also uh, a number of bugs that uh, were done in one place are also replicating all these places. Um, so looking into that, basically around the 121 release of Kubernetes, we have been working on this number of, of features uh, in the job controller to finally uh, make it possible that everybody, or at least most of uh, developers, can uh, run in a single API. Uh, I'm going through basically all of these ones uh, during this talk, but uh, this is for reference, so you can, you can once, once you download the slides, you can go through all this, uh, the documentation for all of these ones. Um, I'm also going to talk a, a bit about what are we thinking for the future and what are the moonshots? Uh, where do we want to bring the job API next? So the, the first one uh, is maybe some of you are already familiar with this, uh, index jobs. Index jobs is simply the ability of creating a single job uh, for a parallel application where each, each pod in the job has a different index. And well, this, um, this index is available as simply a number as a, in an environment variable. Um, so how do you set up a, a, an index job? Um, you just uh, set the completion mode to index and you, s you set the number of uh, completions, the number of pods you want to run. And then uh, in the command line, or well, in your, in your pod, in your workload, you just access the, the, um, 
environment variable and well uh, execute your application and um, well this is this is how how it, it looks uh, in the uh, this is how you can think about index jobs so this is such a fundamental uh, feature that uh, it hasn't existed since the start of Kubernetes and a couple of years back we finally added it uh, the next one is uh, job suspension and, and, scale, and mutable scaling directives. Um, so this uh, provides you with the ability of creating a job, but not start the, the, um, the pods yet. Uh, think of, uh, it's, this, is, this has already been mentioned, but um, you could have a, a case where uh, you don't want, you, you have way more uh, workloads running or you desire to run more workloads than you have capacity in your cluster. And you don't want to make your users uh, simply, well, try to run the application and run into scheduling errors or, or simply fail the, the pod creation, the job creation. You would like to queue these, these workloads. So we added these uh, fields into the, into the, we added just this one field uh, in the job API to say, well, this, this job is suspended and you can implement an external controller uh, to do uh, the unsuspension, the re re to start or resume the job. Even you can suspend it back to, to do preemption and stuff like that. Um, then once uh, this external controller it, uh, considers that there is capacity in the cluster, there is quota, uh, we've dealt with uh, pair sharing uh, within the cluster uh, for all our users. We can start the job and maybe even place it in a particular place. Uh, in this case, uh, we have decided that this job is going to run in, the, uh, in this zone, the US Central 1A, and it's going to run on spot VMs because this is what we have capacity now uh, of spot VMs. And this is exactly what uh, one of uh, the projects in SIG Scheduling is doing. Uh, it's using these APIs uh, to, to implement these this semantics. Uh, and, uh, but the, the interesting thing here is that, well, Q is one project that can use this, but any, any other uh, job, job queuing operator can, can use the same APIs without having to re, re, uh, rewrite the, the job controller or the job or the job API. Um, this one is a, a feature that is the, the most hurtful for me. <laughs> uh, basically, uh, well, I implemented this, but it was quite challenging. And this is why I, I was mentioning uh, initially about bugs. Uh, how this, this bug that is present, was present in the job controller, was present in a lot of these other uh, uh, custom job APIs, and it was very hard to fix. So what was the problem? Uh, basically, the design of a job controller uh, was meant, it was originally thought of uh, low scale and also just to serve uh, services. So it, 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 at some point, when it interacted with the garbage collector, it would start losing track. So you could, say, you could see that your pod said, I have five pods completed, and then later it says, I only completed actually three. Why? Because the pods were disappearing and the job controller was only looking at the, at the pods that existed in the cluster. So this led, of course, at, uh, to pod recreation and then people uh, ended up paying more to run their jobs. And of course, this meant that uh, jobs were unusable at scale. Uh, people running a 5,000 uh, mm -hmm. parallel job wouldn't be able to use the job API, uh, or maybe one, yes, but not, not more than three. So this, uh, this was a, a big problem. And of course, if you had preemptible VMs, spot VMs, uh, once these nodes disappeared, the, the, the progress would be lost as well. So, and as I was saying, custom jobs in the ecosystem had a similar design, uh, similar problems. Um, the fix, is rather an entire rewrite of the of the job controller, which I don't I won't get into the details. But after, uh, during lunch you can 
for me and we can talk about it. Um, and it was such a complicated fix that uh, the feature ended up being uh, disabled by default in the open source release of uh, 123 and 124, even though the feature was already beta. Um, and uh, hopefully we fixed all the, the problems uh, and we re-enabled it back to 125. We, in Kubernetes, we don't really re-enable features by default again, but if you, if you need the feature, you can still uh, re-enable it in 123 and 24 because all the fixes were backported. So this is mostly not visible to users. You, you, you don't say, I want to use job tracking with finalizers. We just track with finalizers. Uh, and you can see some traces of what's happening. You, could, you will have, of course, pods with a finalizer. And, and of course, you will see that your job is finally tracking progress correctly and not losing, not losing, uh, not decreasing counters of completed and uncompleted jobs. Um, and actually, uh, we've heard from some of our customers uh, that they are successfully running index jobs with 5,000 pods or more, uh, which of course was not possible before. Uh, this is uh, another feature uh, we are currently working on. It's, uh, it's in uh, alpha today, and we are, uh, one of our engineers is working on the, on the beta release. Um, so basically, in Kubernetes, you have a number of uh, problems that could cause your pod to, to stop running, right? You could have, of course, software errors, the hardware could, could fail, you could have a maintenance event, like uh, upgrades or simply maintenance, or you could have the eviction API, or maybe a high priority job comes in and the kube scheduler uh, simply um, kills the pod, uh, there is the pod garbage collector. You can add a taint. Uh, there is a cluster autoscaler that could decide that suddenly it wants to preempt some pods because it wants to uh, optimize utilization. Uh, the API server, and you could maybe write your own controller and uh, af uh, affect a running pod. So all of these uh, components can, can really ki kill your pod and uh, you, of course, you might want to retry. You might want not to retry because your, your workload doesn't support uh, preemption. Um, and really, there was no control over, over this, uh, all these problems. You just had a phase in the pod says, that says fail, and the job controller could only say, oh, I want to uh, support up to six failures. Um, so in Kubernetes 125, we added first uh, all, uh, a pod condition to uh, observe what's, what happened to my pod. Uh, we just say, well, this pod has been disrupted and it has been disrupted by skew scheduler for, because of a taint, et cetera, all of, this, all of these problems. And in 126, we are working on the support from Kubelet, all the things that Kubelet might do to kill your pod, uh, which includes a uh, uh, exceeding memory limits, for example, uh, or exceeding uh, the usage of ephemeral storage, and maybe we'll we'll think about some other some other uh, conditions in the future. So, what what do you do with this? This is just the information being uh, passed by, uh, passed from other controllers, and then from the job API, you can use these uh, conditions uh, to decide whether or uh, whether to terminate the job or retry it, or how many times. Um, and also, we uh, have support for uh, looking at the exit codes of the, of the uh, pods. So if you know, for example, that uh, the uh, exit codes 40, 41, and 42 are non-recoverable, you can immediately uh, fail the job without having to uh, go through all the counters. Uh, but maybe, you uh, want to ignore if the pod was disrupted, disrupted by any of the controllers. Um, so you can retry indefinitely uh, for any infrastructure problems. Um, maybe you want to terminate, uh, sorry, uh, yes. Maybe uh, you want to fail your job uh, because of any error that happens in the, 
in the in the um, binary, uh, but you want to retry if there is a, a disruption by the control plane, uh, but only up to a limit. In this case, uh, the back of limit is three, so I want to count this failure, and once it fails three times, I'm done with it. I, I don't want to retry again. Um, so this is all the features we've been working on. Uh, are either most of them are finished, one of them is ongoing, and then in the near future, we want to add this other uh, uh, capability to uh, index jobs where you control the back of per index and you can basically guarantee that all your indexes run at least once or up to the limit. Um, and you can say even, okay, if this limit, if uh, this index fails, I just wanna fail this index, but all of the other indexes can continue running. Uh, we haven't started the design yet, uh, but this is kind of like the potential API. Uh, so, and uh, what, what comes next? Uh, well, we are thinking of uh, uh, some, some moonshots, uh, uh, but, but really what we want, uh, we, we are here uh, in, in Batch HPC Day, basically to present these enhancements and also to ask you, what do you want to see next uh, in the job API? Um, what, how do you think a job V2 API could look like? For example, maybe why do we need not index jobs? Maybe all indexes, all jobs could be indexed. Would be a huge simplification for the Kubernetes control plane uh, that would lead to even better performance. Or maybe you want to see multiple pod templates uh, pattern with a startup sequence, which is something we haven't uh, looked at. Or maybe you want uh, resizable jobs. The jobs currently are fixed, fixed number of completions. Maybe that's something you, you want to, to have. So with all of this, um, how can you get involved? Why, would, why do, should you get involved? Well, we are building these APIs. Uh, we only have three Kubernetes releases per year. Right, so we want feedback as early as possible from the community. Um, so once we publish our API design, we would like to know uh, if it fits your use case. And uh, well, to do that, of course, we also want contributors if you uh, uh, want to contribute to, to the Kubernetes core components. Uh, but this is all the places we communicate in, in particular the working group batch or the CGAPs, uh in Slack or the, the meetings we have. Um, so yes, thank you, thank you for listening to me and uh, please keep in touch. Thank you, Aldo. <laughs> I think we're running out of time, but uh, anybody has any questions? Maybe one or two questions. Yeah, so what's your take on uh, pod groups that are co-scheduled and how that relates to jobs? Um, rather, that's, well, the, from the perspective of the job controller, that's tangential. The job controller doesn't uh, care about scheduling. Uh, it's all about the, how, how it presents to the developers, to the um, application developers. Uh, if you want my take as a six scheduling lead, that's, <laughs> that's a different question. Uh, is that what you're looking for? Yeah, essentially. So we have this idea that for us, a job typically is not a single pod. It's a collection of Kubernetes resources with a lifetime that is tied together with all of them. And that may be multiple pods and services, say. Right, yes. The, yeah, we actually had this question recently in the working group batch uh, about, yes, what if uh, the job also encompasses services in particular, right? For uh, interactive jobs, yeah. for example, that's one use case. Uh, there are two ways to think about this. One is that maybe a service is not that expensive and it could be created from the beginning and it's gonna be there sitting idle because uh, the job, the pods are not created so the services don't have endpoints and whatnot. Um, the other way to think about it is, well, you can uh, implement it in the controller, in your application controller. For example, let's say we have interactive, interactive job 
controller. This interactive job controller has a job, a Kubernetes job, and you say, well, your controller only will create the service once the job is unsuspended, the Kubernetes job is unsuspended. So you could actually just listen to the signal from the job API and control the, uh, the rest of the resources based on that. Uh, the, those are the two ways I've uh, so far thought about it, but of course it's, a, it's an open discussion still. Right, thank you. I think we'll be having an interesting discussion uh, during the panel about this topic as well. Any other questions? I guess one thing, I, well, I guess it's also in the panel, so maybe I'll just ask it now a little bit. But how, so for all these different projects like Argo Workflows, Airflow, they all kind of have gone ahead and most of them are probably scheduling raw pods. And then I guess is the the hope from, from like the working group batch is like, is this a place for people to come to try and like ask how to like migrate to using the jobs? And like, is it normally, is that like what the, I guess the goal of some of these batch groups is to try to get this feedback from them. Absolutely. So I don't blame them for rewriting their own or writing their logic in raw pods because the job controller was not ready. Now that we have fixed a number of things, uh, we hope that uh, all of these projects would uh, use the job API. In particular about Argo, uh, Argo has had the same problem. I don't know if it still does about losing track of progress. Uh, so if they were, a, if they were uh, migrating to the job API, they would basically get rid of, of it without having to re-implement what we already went through. Yeah, for, for index jobs, um, some, some common features I see in HPC-based schedulers for job arrays are, are step and cap. So like a step would be how much to increment between each run. So like if you're mm -hmm. saying one to 100, you could do step 10 and like it'd be 10, 20, 30, 40 for each index. Um, and the other thing is a cap, which is like a limit. So like if you had a index of 100 that you were running you could give it a cap of 10 to only run like 10 at a time. Are, are those features that you guys are looking into implementing? Um, that's actually already supported. Uh, there we go. So if you see here, there is two fields, completions and parallelism. Completions is how many you will run. And <laughs> Oh, I don't think I can, okay. <laughs> uh, but I can point here. So you have two, two fields, completions and parallelism. So completions, completions is how many uh, are in total and parallelism, how many run at a time. So this is actually what the graph is showing here. So it's two at a time running. Uh, now in terms of steps, uh, we believe that this kind of things can be done in the application level. I mean, you can always multiply. Uh, inside, although there have been requests about, uh, basically I want to, you, you know, I run my job and then certain f indexes fail and then I just wanna retry the indexes that failed. Uh, so that's something we, we might be looking into, but we don't have support for running all the indexes yet. So that would be the first step and then we can implement uh, selected indexes to run. But yeah, that's something we are definitely looking forward uh, in the f in the next releases. How how this will handle that of the pod deletion? I missed that. The pod deletion, like a pod eviction. Suppose if the node is draining, then the Kubernetes will automatically evict the pod. Will it retry the pod or? Yes. So that's uh, that's the API for job retries. Uh, that's one of the disruptions the control plane can do, and then you can express in the API whether you want to retry for that particular kind of disruption, or, or if your workload doesn't support it, you, you can stop 
Uh, does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a main process. No more? So do we have the ability to query the job status? So because jobs are long running thing. I mean, they tends to go uh, multiple days or hours. So is there a way to query the job status? What is the status and, you know, ability to uh, understand when it's going to be finished, things like that? Yeah, I don't think I included it here, but uh, you can, in the job status, it will tell you exactly which indexes already finished. Uh, and from that, you can derive which ones still didn't run uh, or complete. So yes, that's okay. That's visible. Job status. One last question, I guess, before we go to lunch. You mentioned earlier that you expected multiple services to potentially interact with suspend and other attributes of the job once it started. Do you, at this, um, you mentioned specifically that you might have a queuing system, and then you mentioned later talking about interactive jobs and one of the other questions that you might have something that would suspend the job while it spins up, say, let's, for example, a service and wait for endpoints to be populated. Is there any way to coordinate that at this time so that you know the job doesn't actually run until both of these things? Because you know, we would have the point where the queuing system sets it, unsuspends it, and the other system then tries to suspend it. And I was wondering if you had any ideas how to prevent it from starting in that brief gap. Um. So uh, I can tell you a little bit of what we are doing in queue, which is our implementation for how we think this should work. And uh, well, there's a, a few things. Um, first, having RBAC to uh, prevent a job from starting is, is one possibility. Uh, but ultimately, the controller can, uh, you know, if he observes a job, try to unsuspend. Uh, you can suspend it back uh, from from the controller. Um, is that is this in the lines of, of your question? I'm not sure. I understand. Yeah, I guess I, I I was wondering if that might lead to like a race condition or something where the job starts in that gap, and if there's any way to yeah. prevent that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, this is kind of uh, we're fitting within the pattern of Kubernetes, which is eventual consistency, right? In Kubernetes, nothing is uh, like uh, we don't issue something and wait for it. We, we or rather, we do. We do. Uh, we have a desired state, and the control plane converges towards the desired state. State. Uh, you uh, again, you can control some things with RBAC, but ultimately, the controllers should uh, remedy those situations uh, where you have these these uh, um, problems, and then. That's, that's when uh, retriable APIs come in place too, so you can control whether uh, you should retry, recreate bots, or, or, or simply stop the, the job. Thank you. Thank you all, I'm sorry for running out of time. Um, so we're gonna be back at 55, 12.55 for lunch. I'm gonna go for lunch now. Thank you so much. Thank you.